Watch until the end because trust me, our final battle was actually insane. In this video, I'll be attempting a hardcore Nuzlocke using only Paul's anime team. If you guys don't know what a hardcore Nuzlocke is, the rules are pretty simple. But the important ones are, I must play the games and set rules, I cannot use any items in battle, and I must play with a level cap. There's a catch though, because almost half his team isn't actually available during the main game. This leaves us with about 10 Pokemon. I don't want to bore you guys with any more details, so let's just get right into this Nuzlocke. After watching the news, we can now start our Nuzlocke, but no thank you, I'd rather just sleep. Just kidding, the Nuzlocke starts now! Nothing personal, kid. Oh, fuck. In Lake Verity, we started off our Nuzlocke by choosing Turtwig. I'll name you Dream. I'm pretty sure you guys get the reference. We then captured a Sardi in Route 201. You'll be named Sapnap. Oh, you're female? Well, I guess a fanfiction should true then. Ash didn't say goodbye to his own mother? Bruh. When you get home, you'll be getting the Chanelas. Just start running when she says your full name. Hey, is that Small Ant? After beating him up, we get the TM for workup, and this could be extremely helpful in the future. Yo, nice drip. I look like that on a daily basis. While training up for the first gym, Sapnap evolves into Saravia, and he gets Intimidate. Intimidate is one of the best abilities in this game. The reason for that is because it lowers the opposing Pokemon's attack upon switching in. Hopefully this is enough for us to face Rourke. Even though we have the type advantage with the gym being rock, Craniodos was a huge pain in the ass to deal with. In my previous attempts, Craniodos would always flinch me, and even if I thought I won, RNG would just strip that away from me. It took us about 5 attempts until we got the battle we needed. It started with me leading with Dream as Rourke sends out Geodude. After using Grove, he sets up the Stealth Rocks. With boosted attack, one crit Leaf H was able to knock him out. He uses Rock Joe, which surprisingly does a decent amount of damage on me. I try using Leaf Edge, but... He has 30, so no KO just yet. Thankfully, he didn't do any more damage on me as he hit him with another Leaf Edge. Now it's time for the bane of my existence, Craniodos. Luckily, we have a plan. I would switch into Sapnap to lower his attack with Intimidate and Growl. I then tried doing some chip damage with Wing Attack. Surprisingly, it did a decent amount of damage. This wasn't enough though, so I decided to switch back into Dream. Please, just don't flinch. After using Razor Lee, Bruh. I said, after using Razor Leaf, I was finally able to knock him out, winning us a battle and getting us a coal badge. I only won because I got lucky. Jesus, this is so dumb. In Jubilee City, we meet Team Galactic, and I'm sorry, but they look even more whack in their chibi form. <laughs> look at them! Look at the top of his head! <laughs> in the Valley Rainwards, we found a Shellos, naming it Gagi. We now have the entirety of the Dream Team. We should now be unstoppable. But that aside, let's talk about the elephant, or I guess the cat in the room. For some godforsaken reason, they made this cat hit like a fucking truck, and it's also really quick. This single Pokemon is known for ending runs, so you guys can see why I'm kind of afraid of facing it. The battle starts as she leads with Zubat, and I send out Goggy. I try using Water Gun, but instead, he uses U-Turn into Perugly. This should be fine though, because the more damage, the better. With Perugly in, I switch into Sapnap to set up the Intimidate, and after a workup, I use Pluck to steal its berry. You won't be needing that, thank you. After a few plucks, I was able to beat Mars without any problems, winning us a battle and temporarily saving the day. After the battle, Dream evolves into Grottle, turning him from a speedrunner to a slow turtle. Oh, have the turns up tabled. In Eternal Forest, we could've captured a Murkrow, but thanks to this stupid Chansey, it died. I've never wanted to punch a fictional character so hard until now. You're lucky you're a Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. Ma. We soon make it to Eterna City, home of the second gym. Gardenia should be easy with Sapnap. As Ruby comes out, I immediately spam Workup to boost my attack. This allowed me to sweep her entire team by just spamming Plucks, winning us a battle and getting us a Forest Badge. Screw the power of friendship. Who needs that when he got skill? We now have the Grand Underground open to us, opening a bunch of encounters for us. In the same town, we notice Team Galactic causing trouble. I wonder what gave that away. In their hideout, we battle Mars with a scary looking skunk that can poison my team, so uh, that's a problem. She sends out Zubat as I send out Goggy. Zubat confuses me, which allows me to use Agent Power, and oh my god, it did so much damage. I think it's safe for me to switch into Sapnap. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Of course we get poison upon switching in, but whatever. After a plug, Zubat faints. She then sends in her skunk. I use Pluck again to steal its berry, 
but it does way too much damage on me. So I switched back into Goggy, and after getting hit hard, he was able to knock him out with a water pulse. My team is badly hurt, so I need to go now. We then head to the Lost Tower, where we can finally catch a Murkrow, naming it Bad Boy Halo. I won't curse because for some reason, he doesn't like that. Language! In the Great Marsh, we get a Marrow named Skeppy. This is gonna be pretty helpful for the upcoming gym. Now we have a one true couple together. Just kidding, don't ship real life people, that's cringe. On our way to Veilstone, Skeppy evolves into Azumarill, making him egg. With a bit of grinding, Doggy evolves into Gastrodon. In the Dazzling Cave, we found Elekid. Your name's gonna be Foolish G. Damn, look at our drip! There's no gambling in this game? What the frick? How can I feel my gambling addiction? Well, at least you guys sell the TMs, but come on. Because Skeppy is a fairy type and he has to move play rough, I feel pretty confident to face Maylene and her dream trainers. She leads with Metatite as I send out Skeppy. I use Workup and for some godforsaken reason, I thought it was a good idea to use Aqua Ring, allowing her to use Flash. This is really stupid because now I just miss over and over and over again. I was forced to switch into Sapnap, and holy crap, that Drain Punch does so much damage on me. I need Skeppy back in. I send him back out and played smart this time by using Play Rough to take it out. Next is my choke. This time I use Aqua Ring and Work Up again, as he knocks off my Shell Bell. Uh oh. Luckily, a Playrough was able to knock her out. Next is a Furry Bait, Lucario. All I need to do is use Playrough to one-shot it, but the accuracy of this move is freaking 90. So I miss. This is horrible because now we can actually lose the run. Knowing this is my only way out, I just hit Playrough. And she uses Bulk Up. Oh my god, Maylene drew hard. After finally connecting with another Playrough, I was able to beat Lucario, winning us a battle and getting us a Cobble Badge. At this moment, I was actually shaking. Holy crap. Dawn needs help with her Pokédex? Nah, let's just face Crash your wake. On our way back to Pasoria City, we encountered a Skorupi that we captured and named H-Bomb. Wait for me, please. I'm fast as fuck, boy. With us having the type advantage with Foolish G and Dream, the gym should be pretty easy to handle. I wanted to think of a way to beat him without losing too much HP on Dream so he can take out both the Quagsire and Float Soul. Thankfully, we have an opportunity to do that with the move Curse, a move that increases both attack and defense, but it lowers your speed. He's slow as heck anyway, so I'm fine with that. Before making it to Wake, Foolish evolved into Electabuzz, making him even more useful for the gym. With this prep out of the way, we should be ready to face Wake. Yikes! His chibi form did not do him justice. The battle starts with me leading with Foolish as he sent out Gyarados. I don't think he understands the predicament he's in right now. After a Thunderbolt, he was easily taken out. Quagsire is next and I switch into Dream. Immediately, I start cursing at it. Your face is ugly! Whooper's a favorite brother. Oh, Twitter loves this one. <clears throat> Ratio! It is important to mention though that he has a move Scold, which is a water type move that has a chance of burning their opponents. I have a Rossberry though, which prevents that from happening. So if you're facing this gym, just keep that in mind. After a Giga Drain, he was easily taken out. Now it's time for his ace, Float Soul. Because of all the curses we set up, the AI decided to use Brine, which barely does anything, and Razor Leaf was able to knock him out, winning us a battle and getting us a Fin Badge. Oh crap, I forgot about Don. Let me help her out for a bit. On her way there, Dream evolves into Torterra, making him even slower. Please give me this Dust Stone. I need it, please. I'll test you to see how strong I am. Buddy, I've been destroying you. What do you mean? Secret medicine? Yeah, right. Like, that's gonna work. Wait, it actually worked? <laughs> give me more! Thank god for Defog. I always hated this route as a kid. In here, Sapnap evolves into Sarafter. This Pokemon is amazing, and I can't wait to keep using it in the future. If you discovered any power derived from the Legend of Sinnoh, Inform me. Yeah, that's yeah, that's cool and all, but how you be 26 looking 40? Well, whatever. In Celestic Town, I was able to get the black glasses and the TM for Surf. I'll be coming back here often because the glasses guy seems interesting. Oh, that white glasses. Heading back in the underground in the icy cave, we get Snow Rot. You'll be named Mihachu. I know, I know. She's known for being wholesome. But for now, she'll be known as the Ice Queen. Also down here, I got the team for Calm Mind. This will be helpful for later. Let's talk about Fantina. She's probably gonna be one of the hardest gym we're gonna face. The reason for this is because she has some really heavy hitters like Miss Magius and Gengar that my team absolutely cannot handle. I mean, come on. Goggy? Well, good luck surviving Magical Leaf. Dream? Fly would crush it. Skeppy? 
She literally has a Gengar. Seriously, I need a plan. I thought of giving Bat the black glasses to increase his dark type moves and call mine to survive Dazzling Gleam. I also gave him Taunt. I don't know if this is enough, but I hope it is. What is 12 plus 28? Oh dang. 40. It's 40. This battle is gonna be pretty rough because I didn't get much sleep, so I'm probably gonna play pretty poorly. She leads with Drifloom as I leave with Bad. Like the dumbass I am, I forgot to turn on my battle animations. <sighs> it's fine. I use Taunt to prevent the Will-O-Wisp, and as soon as that happens, I use Calm Mind to increase my special attack and special defense. I would also use Protect to prevent getting damage from Fly. Yeah. The reason I mentioned battle animations is because the battle went way too fast for my slow moving brain, and I didn't see the text where Taunt wore off. So now Bat is losing HP ever so slightly, and I can't guarantee a sweep. All I can do is hope for the best and wish that Bad can survive a Dazzling Gleam. After getting 4 Calm Minds, a Black Glasses boosted Snarl was able to knock him out. She then sends out her Gengar, with the move Dazzling Gleam. I'm hoping plus 4 is enough for him to survive, but unfortunately, I hit myself in confusion. And after getting hit with a Dazzling Gleam, Bad just dies, making this the first death in the Nuzlocke. We fought Toot and Nail for this Pokemon, so it sucks losing him so early on. I swap into Foolish G, and after doing massive damage with Psychic, he confuses me, forcing me to switch into Sapnap. See, I thought I was faster, so when I click on an Aerial Ace, I thought I would be able to outspeed and kill him, but nope. It outspeeds me, and after a crit sludge bomb, Sapnap goes down, making me lose yet another team member in this one battle. Jesus, I'm an idiot! I'm so sorry Sapnap and bad. This victory is gonna be for you. She sends out her last Pokemon. Miss Magius, and after a Thunderbolt from Foolish and a Razor Leaf from Dream, we were able to knock her out, winning us a battle and getting us a Red Lick badge. Well, the good news is I can f*** this again. Language! What the? You're dead, how? After this, I got a good night's sleep because I don't want to make any more mistakes in this Nuzlocke. If you guys are constantly making mistakes in this game like I am, just relax and take a break from the game for a bit. We are back on that grind, and with two slots open on our team, we added both H-Bomb and Nihachu to the mix. In Mount Cornet, we got a Dawnstone. This allows Nihachu to evolve into Frostlass, officially making her the Ice Queen. With a bit of EV training, she'll be unstoppable. On our way to Cantaloupe City, we head to the underground for a bit for a new encounter, Gligar. He was really annoying to catch though. Yup, your name's gonna be Tommy. Yo, Glasses Man, what do you have for us? The Choice Specs? Oh my god. This is so good, yup I'm taking that. We finally made it to Cantaloupe City, and here we have another battle with Ash. Wow, you finally have a Saravia. That doesn't change the fact that Ash was extremely easy to take down. I guess this is true to the anime, huh? Byron was an extremely easy battle. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's worse than his son. Do I really need to explain why? I lead with Dream, and after sending up a Leech and Curse, a few Razor Leaps swiftly took it out. Steelix is… well, Steelix. Oh, I'm so sorry for insulting you. Jesus. Never mind. I switched into Dream to take it out with Earthquake. Next is Bastiodon. But I had a harder time with Cranados. So, yeah. Winning us a battle and getting us a Minecraft badge. A huge explosion? It wasn't me this time, I promise. We should probably report this to the door. I'm worried about Lake Valor, so you must go. Me? I'm 10 years old. What do you expect me to do? Fine, I'll go. I make it to Lake Valor, and oh my god, those poor Magikarps! You bastards! what is wrong with you? You my friend are tough, I can see why you defy us so. Sir Serves you right? Leave those Magikarps alone. Okay, let's head to Lake Verity. I got a score to settle there. Thanks for being useless, professor. Hey, watch who you're growling at. You know what? Screw this. Oh god, I need to chill out a bit. So for that, I head to Route 216 to relax for a bit. On our way there, h and bobs into Drapion, which is a Pokemon we really need for Candice. <clears throat> Candice Dick! God, I love the music here. Uh... <laughs> In the same route, we captured her final encounter, Sneasel. She'll be really helpful for the champion of this region. I will name you Captain Puffy because you'll be our captain that will lead us to victory. And with that, we can finally focus on making a champion out of everyone on our party. I soon make it to Snowpoint City, where our next gym's gonna be. And uh, fuck you Mindy. So let's talk about Candice. Her team's pretty 
unorthodox. I mean, why do you have a Metachan? This Metachan has huge power, which literally doubles its physical attack. It doesn't help that he has Rock Slide, Brick Break, and Ice Punch. This one Pokemon can actually destroy the entirety of my team. Luckily though, I got a small trick up my sleeve. I'll send in H-Bomb, the Drapion, and I'll stack up on the weakest Pokemon, that being Snover with Sword Stance. I'll also give it a Prison Berry to remove the potential confusion, and Sunny Day to get rid of the hell. Hopefully this works and all I need to do is put this plan into action. Can this viewer watching this video subscribe? If you guys do, I greatly appreciate it! Anyway, she leads with Snover and I lead with H-Bomb. I use Sunny Day to get rid of the hell. And after a not so strong avalanche, I was able to set up plus 4 with sword stance. This was enough for one cross poison to knock it out. With a bit of edging to level 43, we got some newfound power that allowed us to sweep her entire team with a series of cross poison and night slashes, winning us a battle and getting us an icicle badge. This went really smoothly. God, I'm kinda proud of myself. Ash, you literally had one job. How did you fail this? Hey, don't look at me like that. You're the one who messed up. We head to Veilstone City, which is where Team Galactic's hideout is. I kinda wish they remade the speech Cyrus would give in Platinum, because every time I would get on the mic, it would be a perfect opportunity for me to shout out the channel. But, oh well. Next time I guess. We storm through the hideout, beating everyone inside, until eventually, we release the Three Lake Guardians. Our next destination is the Spear Pillar. All our hard work and training has come to this moment, where we finally end Team Plasma Team Plasma? Where we finally end Team Galactic once and for all. Oh no, Dialga's angry? Who would've thought? Commander, Mars, and Jupiter are pretty difficult battles, but all you need to do is isolate one trainer from another. What I mean by that is knocking out all the Pokemon from one trainer so that the stronger, scarier trainer doesn't have a backup. I decided to aim for Mars. Foolish used Thunderbolt on Bronzor, and another one was able to take it out. Her per ugly squishes Munchlax. Holy f Imagine getting jumped by that. That's a blessing in disguise because after Volt switching into H-Bomb, Ash's Infernape close combats the cat, easily knocking it out. Easily! Finally, the AI for once did something useful for me. I guess Ash can be a decent trainer sometimes. Her last Pokemon, Golbat, was easily taken out after a few Night Slashes. Now that we successfully isolated them, we shouldn't have a problem dealing with Jupiter. Easy clap. I'm going to completely crush you. Uh-huh. Sure, buddy. He leads with Hunchcrow as they start off with Foolish. With a Wise Land boosted Thunderbolt, I was swiftly able to knock him out. His Gyarados is next, which is typically scary with Earthquake, but because of the Volt Switch, I was able to not only remove his Wakon Berry, I was also able to pivot the Earthquake into Dream. Expecting an Ice Fang, I pivot into Nikki. I outsped, and a Thunderbolt was able to take him out. Each boy! He then sends out his Weavile. My best bet was to switch into Skeppy, since he doesn't have anything effective against her, and the player off absolutely annihilated the crap out of it. Last is Scrollbat, but after a few Night Slashes, I was easily able to knock it out, winning us a battle, and finally ending Team Galactic. Wow. That was easy. All we need to do now is face Dialga. So we look at God of Time straight in the face, and I drew a Master Ball on him because there's no way I'm gonna deal with him. I made it to Shunisaur City, just to be told that Volknor is bored or something, and for some reason it's our job to fix that? I don't know. Hey, get your ass back to the gym, will ya? If I find you weak, I'll challenge the Pokemon League. You know what? That's it. Square up right now. Well, at least I convinced him. Your electric type team has a water and a normal type. How did you even let that happen? I think it's time for us to put Tommy the Gligar on our team. He gives us a type advantage after all. He destroys all the gym trainers, and now we stand face to face in front of the final gym leader, Faulkner. All we need to do now is defeat him so we can finally face the Pokemon League. So, enough talking. Let's do this! He leads with Raichu as his send and Dream. He uses Surf and it barely does any damage, so I retaliate with an Earthquake. Despite him having a Sugar Berry, I was able to Oko him without any problems. He then sends out an amazing Electric type, Octillery. Expecting him to use Aurora Beam, I switch into Foolish, and a Thunderbolt easily knocked him out. He then sends out yet another Electric type, Amnipalm. He uses Fake Out, and I can immediately see the power of Technician. Holy crap! Technician is not a joke y'all. I was forced to switch into Nikki, and after locking myself into Ice Beam, I was eventually able to knock him out after a few. Now, it's time for his last Pokemon, Luxray. Knowing he has Crunch, I switch into Goggy, and with one Earth Power, we were able to knock him out, winning us a battle, and getting us a Beacon Badge. Who are you calling weak now, Faulkner? With that, we have all our Gym Badges, and we can finally head over to the Pokemon League. 
Thank god we didn't need HMs anymore because traversing through the victory road would have been a massive pain. Finally a razor claw! Why is this here, Jesus? I soon make it to the end, and while looking at the Elite Force team, I decided to replace both Skeppy and Foolish with Captain and Tommy. Thank you so much, without you two, the journey would not have been possible. Captain soon evolves into Weavile. Captain, I believe you can carry me to victory. No pressure of course. Before heading into the Elite Four, we have our final battle with Ash. This is his final chance to prove to me that the power of friendship is the way to train my Pokemon. Our final battle starts as he leads with Sarafter and I lead with Tommy. Knowing he can't do too much to me, I use Rocks like an Acrobatics to take it out. He then sends out his Floatzel. As he uses Ice Fang, I switch into Goggy. And the power of friendship ends up saving me. But come on, you need more than that to convince me. And Earth Power easily took it out. Easy clap. His Rose Raid was easily taken out with a plus 2 Cross Poison, and Infernape shares the same fate. I am so glad I released you. Holy crap you're weak. He then sends out Snorlax. Our trusty Torterra easily destroyed this adorable panda with a few earthquakes. Last is Heracross, but because of Tommy's acrobatics, I was easily able to knock him out, winning us a battle, and finally ending this useless rivalry. And to the very end, you've been pathetic. The Elite Four this time around is insane. Not only do all their Pokemon have items, but all their Pokemon are EV trained in their respective stats. This will make the Elite Four, let alone the champion, extremely hard to take down. But if I play smart enough, I believe I can do it. With all that said, this is the final team I'll be taking until the very end until I complete this Nuzlocke. This should be enough for me to finish the game. If I lose, then I guess I'm just bad. The first member is a bug type elite for member, Baby Bug Boy Aaron. He leads with Dust Hawks, which was immediately taken out with an acrobatics. He then sends out Beautifly. Preparing for the sweep, I use Sword Stance. After plus two, this should be enough to be taken out with an acrobatics. The same happens for Heracross and Vesmiquin. He then sends out his ace, Drapion. One earthquake should not come out, but then he outspeeds and crits me. <sighs> I switch into Goggy, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but with the power of friendship, I was able to all him with one Earth power, winning us a battle, and making this a first member down. We seriously lost a Pokemon already. God, I'm so trash. Next is a ground type elite for member, Berta. She sent her Quagsire, and with it being 4 times weak to grass, a few bullet teeth was able to knock it out. She then sends her Whiskash, which is also 4 times weak to grass, but this time, he has Ice Beam, so uh... Yeah, that's not good. Anticipating an Ice Beam, I switch into Goggy, just for him to use Bulldoze. What the f***, man? After a few serps, I was able to take it out. Sudowoodo is next, and I expect to be faster than this chunk of rocks. Of course I'm wrong, and he uses Giga Impact on me. What the f***, bro? How? Because of my mistake, I lose Goggy. I am so sorry, man. That's my bad. I go back into Dream, and he's out for revenge. After using Curse, an Earthquake destroys his stupid rock. Golem was next and was destroyed with a few bullet seeds. And now it's time for his last Pokemon, Hippowdon. After taking an Ice Fang, I use Bullet Seed to finish this battle once and for all. Winning us a battle, and making this the second member, down. I can't believe I lose two Pokemon in the first two members. Cynthia's gonna absolutely step all over me. Not like I don't enjoy that though. Now we'll be facing the Fire Type League for member, Flint. He leads with Rapidash, I should lead with H-Bomb. I immediately start using Dig. He somehow live and put me to sleep. But I have a Chesco Berry, so I immediately wake up. As he heals up, I use Sword Stance, and finally a plus 2 Dig was able to knock it out. But in retaliation, I get burnt with Flame Body. God damn it! He then sends out the Furry Bait, Lopani, and Lord forgive me for what I'm about to do. I needed to use Sword Stance once again because after getting burnt, it lowers my attack, and after a Cross Poison, I was sadly able to knock it out. He sends out Steelix. I switched into Dream, and after a curse, I just kept spamming Earthquake. Because of the power of friendship, he kept missing me like an idiot, and eventually, I was able to knock it out with an Earthquake. I'm so scared of Drifaloon because this guy has Will O Wisp and fing Minimize, so I gotta take him out ASAP. Thankfully, I was lucky enough to do that, and with the power of friendship, one Crunch was able to knock it out. Jesus, I guess the power friendship ain't that bad. Last is his ace, Infernape. I tried doing a ballsy move by staying in, and thank god it didn't die, because after an earthquake, I was finally able to knock it out. I did not deserve this win. I played like crap, but I'll take it. Last is a psychic type elite for a member, Lucian. 
He lead with Ash's stat, as he lead with H-Bomb. Knowing he would set up a Reflect, I used Taunt to prevent that. This gave me the opportunity to use Sword Stance, and after a Cross Poison, I easily took it out. Next is Metacham, but he has no chance for my plus 2 boosted Crunch. He then sends in Giraffe Ring. Knowing he can't do too much to me, I use Sword Stance. But then he uses Trick Room. This means H-Bomb is slower, and I can't complete the sweep anymore. This is fine though, because we got the rest of the team. After getting hit by Thunderbolt, a Crunch swiftly took it out. Alakazam shares the same fate, and now it's time for his ace. Bronzong. The Trick Room forces me to switch into Dream. This was effective because after a bunch of crunching, we were finally able to destroy the Bronzong. Winning us a battle, and making this a final member? Down. This is absolutely insane. And now we just have to face the champion of the Sinnoh region, Cynthia. I can't believe we made it this far. Her team is pretty stacked, and me and my 4 Pokemon have to find a way to beat her. I have a plan, but if things don't go right, everything will just fail. So I hope everything goes according to plan. I step into the room, and I immediately face her. <sighs> You're not stepping on me this time, I'm stepping on you, bitch! Step on me instead. No. No, 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 no. Oh my god, the way, the way she chose her Pokeball. Oh. Ah. Jab pressure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. His spare tomb is like, make one more joke, I dare you. Mm, he only has Shadow Ball. I'm pretty sure he can only use Shadow Ball on me, and that's resistant, so. So. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, just, just don't crit me. That's fine. Oh, that's that's okay. Now I just yo, the berry animations look. He look like almonds. Light slash. I specialized it, but that's like a lot of work. There we go. Okay, that's one down. I think he's gonna send out his Lucario now. Cor yep. Okay. Oh, uh, you knock out his Lucario. Okay. Wow, you beat the furry bait. Oh, shut up. We bought his furry bait also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, the true, the true furry bait is Gardevoir. No, Lapunny. Lapunny, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mega Lapunny. I know it's weird having Ice Shard on him. I get it. I can't learn Ice Punch. I need to breed him, and I can't. I obviously can't do that with the challenge I'm doing right now. It's it's a Nuzlocke. You can't breed in Nuzlocks? No. Well, I think he's dead here. I feel like you could. Oh, that's fine. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Am I faster than you? Yeah, I am. Okay. Mm, that's okay. My Lord Egg. Okay, he's gonna... Yeah, he has Ice Beam. Oh. Oh, no. He has Ice Beam. Oh, no. He has Ice Beam. <laughs> Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. No. I know what I must do. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dream. You've helped me out throughout this challenge. You're faster! Oh, I'm the power of friendship! <laughs> 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 oh my god! I cannot believe you. Okay. Oh, what? what? He has a um, multi skill, uh, marble skill. What is that again? Okay, what I was saying. Thank you for being on my team. Oh man. He's dead. No! Never punish! I'm never punished! <laughs> oh yeah, he got he, that was a crit? That was, that was a crit? What? What 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 type of crit was that? That's some <laughs> some what the fuck? Bro, bro, he he survived two times for you. Treat him right. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'm gonna go send out Glaceon. Get predicted on <laughs> Freezes me, even though I'm an ice type. Oh, come on! This is ridiculous! That is so. <laughs> come on! What the fuck? <laughs> come on. I'm okay with losing to Garchomp. I, I put up a good fight. I'm fine with this. Are you? No, I, 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 I came so far just to lose, but I'm okay. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. <laughs> okay, he's level 56 or 66, so. Thank you so much, <laughs> Why didn't you just. Ice attack! I have a f choice specs. Oh. Uh. 
Oh, never punish. <laughs> what the hell? This is this is ridiculous. Okay, this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> this is this is kind of ridiculous. What the hell is this? Oh! <laughs> Come on! This is so dumb. Can we agree that this is kind of dumb? <laughs> what dumb? This is the fucking greatest thing ever. Thank you so much, stream. You've helped me out. Okay, you're dead. <laughs> Finally, oh, God. <laughs> poor thing, you kept it on like the last bit of health for four months. <laughs> that motherfucker wanted to die, but it felt too bad leaving you and your well, useless ass behind. Yeah, he's dead. What is me? What? Never wow. punish. Never punish. Oh, the arrow punish. <laughs> Bro, treat these people right, please. They're good to you. Yeah, maybe you're right. I, I know I'm right. Okay. Okay, power of friendship. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. Don't look at me like that. You know what you've done to me. You don't don't look at me like that. You piss me off. <laughs> you and you <laughs> imagine if I survived. That, <laughs> that would I was going to say like, oh man, that would have been really funny. Oh, I think I lost here though. Uh, nah. Yeah, no, because he's no, no, no. He, I lost here. Nah, 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 nah I lost here. Nah, he's faster than me. <laughs> yeah, I lost. Nah. Oh <sighs> no! The car jump. I'm fine with that. That was a, that was a good. That was that was a cool ass. That was a cool ass ending. Holy! <laughs> f <laughs> how, would Tor how would Torterra survive? So many times was beyond me. How how is that even happening? Torterra is goaded. I know I lost the Nuzlocke to her last Pokemon, but honestly, I'm satisfied with her final battle. I put up a good fight, and I'm sure Cynthia will remember my name. It's accurate to the anime anyways. Paul got destroyed, but in the game, he actually has a chance. I just needed to play a little smarter next time. This was such a fun challenge, and best belief I'll be doing more hardcore Nuzlocke and BDSP. If you guys are interested in that, be sure to subscribe. If you guys have any suggestions on what manga or anime team I should do next, please comment it down below. I would love to hear it. Thank you guys for watching me suffer, and watch me suffer more with these hardcore nuzlocks. If not, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye